again before we went to the teaching. Um, the, the people in Florida uh, are in such a um, dire place. Uh, the tornadoes and the hurricane, and we thank God that the hurricane has decreased from a category five, they say now to a category three. So I know that you've been praying for them. I've been praying for them. And we're going to continue uh, to pray that the devastation is not as extreme as they are predicting or as they had thought that it would be. I'm telling you, prayer does work and prayer can change things. So we're just standing in prayer. We're interceding for them. We're praying for those that for whatever reason decided not to leave um, their homes or whatever, that they are safe. You know, it reminds me just as in the the, the day of Noah, and I was speaking to someone about this uh, uh, on the other day, how oh, that yeah. just as it was in the mommy, days mommy. of Noah, uh, mute your mic, please. Uh, the people did not heed the warnings that were given to them. Mo Noah preached for a hundred and uh, 20 years, he was called the preacher of righteousness, warning the people, telling them to get right, that judgment was coming, that it was going to rain, but they would not hear him. And, and you know, the same thing is happening today. The voice of God is speaking and he's speaking to us. And I, we've been talking about how that God uh, have us in seasons and how that we are in a season when God, by, but because he loves us and because he's merciful unto us, he, he gives us warnings and he gives us time to actually um, examine ourselves or to prevent us from you know, entering into the, the destruction and the wrath that comes with being disobedient. So the same things are happening over and over again. You know, Solomon said there's nothing new under the sun. Everything that we see, it has happened before. Uh, it happened with John the Baptist. John the Baptist came and he preached uh, and prepared the way for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But the people did not hear him. They did not believe him. So the voice of God is still speaking and he's speaking to us in a very clear way, uh, people of God. And, you know, I, I'm reminded of when Elijah um, had, had gone before Jezebel and Ahab, and he had pronounced and he had stood before the false prophets and so forth, and he had dared them, okay, poor, do whatever you need to do to call forth your false gods. And, 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 and he killed all of the prophets, her prophets. And he fled in fear and he went there and he was hiding out, glory to God, because he said, this is just too much for him. I'm ready to die because he was fearful. But he was listening and waiting for the voice of God. And God did not speak in that loud voice and the thunder and the cracking of the mountain and all of that in the way that you sometimes expect him to speak. But God right now, is speaking in a still, quiet voice. He's sending us his word. He's sending, sending us his word to heal us and to deliver us out of our destruction. So we have been talking about uh, prayer and, and we've been talking about uh, praying the will of God. Are we praying the correct prayer? Are we praying the prayers that uh, is actually in tune with what the Father wants us to pray and what he is doing in this end time. And so on last Sabbath, uh, we ministered, it's a heart, H-E-A-R-T -E thing. And we're going to view, uh, play that on uh, the radio ministry on tomorrow because I want the people on radio ministry to hear it because it's a powerful, powerful message. And this is what the Father wants us, people of God. He wants us to hear what he is saying so that when we are praying, that our prayers are fruitful and our prayers are only going to be fruitful if we are praying the will of God. Amen. How are we going to pray the will of God? How are we going to know 
uh, the will of God, if we have a relationship with him, and if we allow the Holy Spirit uh, to search our hearts, as the word of God tells us in Romans the eighth chapter, uh, to pray the perfect will of the Father. And, you know, it's just time out for us as born again believers. The Father has given us such power and, and such um, authority. And he has given us that power and, and his authority through his word uh, by using his name and by speaking the word of God. And when we as the people of God develop that one-on-one -on -one relationship with the Father, when we become one with him, uh, then we are going to submit ourselves and we're going to yield ourselves to the Holy Spirit and allow the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us in our prayer time. Amen. So today we are going to go to 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, and we're just going to talk about some things. We're, we're going to talk about prayer because prayer in uh, I said on the radio ministry today that 2025, and I've been telling you all that 2025 is just going to be a very, very turbulent year. It's going to be a lot going on, and it's going to take the people of faith, people that know how to pray, people that are, are rooted and, and grounded in the word of God. We are going to be the ones that are going to be able to stand uh, because it's going to be a lot of things going on, and things are going to happen quickly. Things are going to happen suddenly. Uh, things are going to be happening without us really being aware. Uh, in the natural, because they are not going to be seen in the natural by our natural eyes. But those of us that have a relationship with God, that know how to pray, that spend time in prayer, uh, then these things are going to be revealed to us supernaturally by the Spirit of God. And this is how we're going to stay in tune with God during these, these days. It, is, it has to be that one-on-one -on -one relationship. In prayer, remember, prayer is talking to God. It's talking to God. It's not just one way, but it is also being still and listening to what the Father has to say. Sometimes during this season, you are just going to lay still or sit still before the Father, and he will begin to speak to you by his spirit and show you in the spirit those things that are coming upon the earth and those things that he wants us to be prepared for and those things that we can pray. There are going to be some things that we can hold. We can, he's going to give us that power and that authority to hold it, to stop it in the name of Yeshua. And that is because he has given us that powerful, those powerful tools of binding and loosening. And we know that the word of God says that we can only bind those things that God has already bound in heaven. And we can only loose those things in earth that God has already loose in heaven. So there are gonna be some things that the Father is going to reveal to us by the Holy Ghost. And we're going to be say. I take authority over you in the name of Yeshua or in the name of Jesus, and I bind you. You will not be able to carry out this assignment in the name of Yeshua. Now, we have to understand that we are God's authority. We are God's voice. We are God's chosen people in this earth realm. And he has placed us here to make a difference. He has placed us here to be a light, to shine in darkness and to make a difference, okay? Uh, so, uh, and, and I know some of our new people are on tonight, but uh, I, I just go, I just go, okay? So now, now let's go to 1 Thessalonians, uh, the fifth chapter. Uh, and, and those of you that may be new with us, you can see we are spirit-led people. We speak as the spirit of God gives us the utterance to speak. Uh, because when God speaks, that is what he wants his people to hear at that particular time. Sometimes you study the word of God, and then he would totally change the message because he wants something specifically said to his people on this evening. This is what he really wants us to understand, the people of God, that we are people of authority. We are not helpless people. 
We are not defeated people. We are victorious people. God called us and chose us and the blood of Jesus washed us and cleansed us. And we're seated in the, on the right hand side of the father in the throne in Christ Jesus in that place of power and authority. And he has given us that power and authority to rule and reign in this earth realm. And we have got to execute that. Now, those of you that are new, you need to go on YouTube and you need to listen to some messages that are already there that's going to bring you right in alignment with what I'm talking about tonight, okay? Go on YouTube, uh, the messages are there. I, I am long-winded, I, I, I teach a long time. If you don't have the time to listen to the entire message at one time, pause it, remember where you left off, go back later on and listen to it. But it will be a blessing to you, it will be profitable uh, for you to listen to the word of God. That word of God is going to sustain us. The prayer, glory to God, the word of God says that the prayers of the righteous, and we're going to look at that the effectual prayers of the righteous avail if much, okay? So now, let's look at um, 1 Thessalonians. Uh, and we're going to start with verse um, 16. And it reads this, like this in the Amplified Transliteration. The word of God says that this is Paul talking to the, the, the church of Thessalonica. And, and he is really encouraging them. They were going through some difficult times. And the apostle Paul was always said to encourage the people to give them strength so that they would be able to endure so the Apostle Paul is telling um, the people there, you know, how to overcome and how to stand and what was necessary and needed for them to do in times of stress and times of opposition, okay? So he says this in verse 16, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 16, rejoice. This is the first thing. Um, that the, he was telling the people, says, I want you to rejoice. He says, you must rejoice. Because see, if we look at um, the situations and the things, the circumstances that are happening in this world and during this time, it was still our joy. It was still our joy. So we cannot be moved by what we see. We cannot be moved by what we hear if it is contrary to the will and the purpose of God. How are we going to know whether or not it's to, uh, uh, in connection with the will of God? It's because we're in prayer. And he's going to let us know. We're going to be able to sense by the Spirit of God. This is God. This is not God. I have the authority uh, that God has given me to do something about this situation. Remember, we are kings in this earth realm. We are priests of the Most High God. We are not the high priest, Jesus Christ is, but we are priests of God. Amen. He has given us that place and, and that voice of authority to speak in the name of Jesus. But we cannot just speak anything. We must speak what we know and we hear the Father telling us to speak. And he's going to reveal it to us by his word at that particular time. Now you can be speaking a word, but it may not be applicable for that particular time. That is why it's important that you pray, that you stay in connection so that you will know exactly what to speak at any particular time. Example, Moses, when he was with the children and the wilderness, God told him one time to, to, to speak to the rock. And then another time he said what? To smite them. Well, he had to hear. He had to hear at that particular time and receive specific instruction from the father as to what he was to do. So during this particular time, see Moses didn't have the Holy Spirit as we have it. Glory to God, the Holy Spirit was in him, but he did not have it to the measure that we do. But we have the spirit of God dwelling on the inside, on the inside of us, and we have his word, okay? So in any particular situation, by the spirit of God, you are going to know the appropriate prayer to pray. The appropriate prayer to pray 
at any given time, okay? So we have to rejoice during any situation. And we're going to get to some things. Just hold on. Rejoice always and delight in your faith. You have to delight in your faith. You have to believe and know that we are men and women of God and that we are rooted and grounded in the truth of God's word, okay? Be unceasing and persistent in prayer in every situation. Listen to this. I'm going to read that again. Be unceasing and persistent in prayer in every situation. It doesn't matter no matter what the circumstances are, no matter what the circumstances. You may be praying something and you think that you're praying the word of God. Well, the circumstances that you are, are actually addressing, they're, they're not really being addressed by God. Why? It is because that's not the will of God. That is not the proper prayer at that particular time. We're going to get into something else. Hold on. Be thankful and continually give thanks to God for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Oh my goodness. The apostle Paul says, irregardless of the circumstance, how you pray, irregardless as to what the answer is, irregardless as to what the outcome is, that we are to be thankful because that's God's will concerning that particular situation. You see, that's why oftentimes we become overwhelmed. Uh, we become um, um, faint-hearted because we're praying, but our circumstances are not changing. They're not changing. It is because whatever you're praying, if it's not the correct prayer at that time, and if it's not God's will for you, Oh, your God's will for you concerning that circumstance, then it's not going to change. And if it's not going to change, the apostle Paul says, still rejoice. Because if your circumstance don't change, God knows better than you. He knows better than I. He knows what is going to meet us in the future. So he is going to answer, he's going to move according to his will and not according to prayers that we are praying that is not in alignment, that is not in agreement with the will of the Father. So whatever the circumstance is, God is working it out for your good. He, it, it, it might not be. My goodness, I remember some prayers when I was new in, in, in uh, the kingdom and some prayers I was praying, you know, in mature, not uh, rightly dividing the word of God, praying some things, but it didn't work out the way that I was praying. And today, I thank God and I rejoice in that, that God did not answer or honor those circumstances that I was asking, begging, making my petition known to him to answer. But he said, no. At that particular time, I didn't understand it. But today, as a father, I thank you, you see. So there are things that we pray, and we pray in all sincerity from our, our our level of understanding, our level of faith, our level of having a relationship with God. But God says, no, no, that, that is not my will for you. And I love you too much to give that to you, you see. So when we are praying the word and we are praying the will of the Father, the circumstance that we are addressing the Father will hear, he will answer, and he would decree it to be so in the name of Yeshua, okay? Now, prayer has authority and it has power. Prayer is authority. Prayer is power when praying the will of God. I'm telling you, I've seen some miraculous things happen praying. And I'm going to give you, and some of you, the hope as you've heard this testimony before, but uh, maybe someone on tonight that have not heard it. 
But I remember I was thinking about this hurricane and all this weather that's going on in Florida right now. And I remember, I think it was 2012. And that was when the Mayans had um, predicted that the world was coming to an end because the calendar had come to closure. And I was just, I was on a cruise ship, a huge cruise ship. It was over 2000 passengers on that cruise ship. And we were just sailing out of Cancun. And we are getting out there in the, the Gulf of Mexico, right where this storm, this, storm, this hurricane uh, had begun to accumulate. Out there in that Gulf. And I'm telling you, we got out there and that, that storm hit. It was not a hurricane, but it was a tropical storm and it was a horrific storm. That's why I can really um, um, touch and, and feel and I have some real compassion for the people in Florida because I've experienced some of these things. And that storm hit and it hit like suddenly. And I remember I was in my stateroom and um, I, I had my, my draperies open, open the balcony and I looked out and it was pit black out there. You could not see anything. And all of a sudden you saw these huge waves, this water coming towards this great big ocean liner. And the ocean liner would, would sway from one side to the other. And you know, I know the power of prayer. And I know, and we've experienced the, the power of binding and loosening. We've experienced the power of speaking to the elements and so forth. This saying, peace be still in the name of Jesus and the elements, the heavens obeyed that command, obeyed that authority. So during this particular time, I says, yeah, Father, I know uh, I have the authority I can speak and I speak to this storm in the name of Jesus and I command it to cease now. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me very, very, very quietly in that still quiet, quiet voice. And he said, no, you will not rebuke this storm. I am going to show you and teach you that irregardless as to what situation in any circumstance that will ever occur in your life, I have the power and the authority to keep you safe. And I closed my draperies and I got in the bed, I prayed and I went to sleep. And when I, I slept through the storm, I slept all the way through the storm. When I woke up, the cruise ship had already docked. And I says, God, you are so awesome. What am I saying? I was praying. I was using my authority that I know that God had given me. I was using the authority and speaking the word of God. I was speaking the power of God. And I was speaking it with faith. I was speaking it with confidence because I've seen the word work many times. But this time, God said, no, this is not the prayer. This is not the prayer. It's not my will hallelujah, for this storm to cease at your command. I am taking you to another level of faith, Frankie, and letting you know, I don't care what circumstance you're in, it might not work out the way that you want it. That prayer that you're praying, that power and that authority that you are speaking forth, it might not calm the situation, but I want you to know that I can deliver you I have authority over everything. And I say, God said, go to sleep. And I went to sleep and I rise safely. So you see how we can speak and we can use our authority. We can speak with power, but is it at the proper time? Is that the will of God at that particular time? God wanted to show me another level of faith. He wanted to show me another level of his power. He wanted to show me that in the midst of a tropical storm with waves coming at that ship, making it way sway back and forth, that he still was in control. Glory to God. He was teaching me that irregardless at the situation that I am in, irregardless as to how dismal it may look, that I have safety and I'm secure in him. I'm telling you, it took me to another level of faith in the name of Jesus. And that's what we're, we're really pushing, praying the will of the Father. Father, is this your will? What is your will for me in this situation? During this time and in the times to come, 
we've got to stop praying those Alice in Wonderland prayers. We've got to stop praying those prayers that we're daydreaming about being multimillionaires and having all this money and all of these fab, this fabulous lifestyle and so forth. We, we've got to stop praying those prayers. The Father says that he knows what we have need of. Amen. So he wants us to get into the spirit because this is how we're going to survive. This is the only way that we are going to be able to survive even before this is out. We have a few more months in this year. This year isn't over yet. 25 is rapidly approaching. And God is saying, learn how to pray. Prayer. Learn how to pray my will. This is what's going to give you that confidence. This is what's going to give you security. This is what's going to keep you safe. This is what's going to keep your mind in perfect peace. Because when you're praying my will, you have peace. And the things that are around you, there are going to be things around us happening. But we are going to have peace because our mind is stayed on the Father because we are praying his will. And in the will of God, when we pray, there's security, there's safety, there's provision, there's healing, there's any and everything that you will ever need or desire, okay? So we are to pray, thought with that, uh, use that authority and that power to pray the will of God, not attempt to use his power and authority to pray uh, our own selfish prayers, to pray our own selfish, um, greedy, lustful, sensual desires. God does not honor that. We can't manipulate God. You can't control him. God says, this is what I will for you. And this is the way it is. And this is the way it's going to be. And when you begin to say, yes, Father, I rest in you. I trust in you. Whatever circumstance is going on in my life right now, by faith, I receive, I receive what it is that you say, because I know that I can trust you and you have nothing but love and peace towards me. Okay. So when we look at the word will, well, when we say um, God's will, and we look at this word will, you can find that in G2307. And it is a determination. What is a will? A will is God's determination. God's will is whatever he determines it to be. It's his decision. Amen. It is God's choice. What is God's will? It's his choice. He chooses what will be for you. He chooses, not you, in the name of Yeshua. He chooses our, our life has already been ordered by God. If we are in the kingdom, I'm not talking about people in the world. People in the world do their own thing. They make their own decisions. They make things happen for them in an illegal way that is not um, acceptant to God. They're unrighteous, okay? But we're in the kingdom. We're the people of God. So they're the different set of rules and regulations that we must live by. We must live by, and we've got to accept this. And this is why so many people are tormented, they're troubled right now. They're angry and they're bitter because they're angry because they don't want to accept God's will for their life. They don't want to accept God's purpose and plan for their life. And they become angry and they become bitter and they began to accuse God. They began to doubt. They began to reason. They become fretful. They become weary in well-doing. They're no longer steadfast. They're no longer standing in faith. They're no longer living by faith. It is because you refuse to accept God's will for you. God's plan for us is perfect. It's perfect. And when, if we would just submit to the will of God, oh my goodness, what peace mm, and what joy. See, the word of God says rejoice. Go back, connect to joy. You see, or go back to the Adams when they were in 
um, in the Garden of Eden. They had peace. They had joy. They weren't afraid of anything. They wasn't afraid when God voice would come walking in the cool of the day and speaking to them. They weren't fearful. There was no fear. There's no fear when you're in the will of God. There's only peace. There's only peace. So they were at peace, but the moment that the Adams disobeyed God and, and partook of that tree of of knowledge of good and evil, what happened? Fear came. When now, when God, that day, when God came walking, his voice came walking in the cool of the day to converse, to fellowship with the Adam. What happened? Fearful. They became fearful. There was no longer peace. Hallelujah. Because they had disobeyed. They were no longer in the perfect will of God. That's what praying and being out of the will of God do to us people of God. It destroys your peace and it brings you to that place of fear, doubt, unbelief, trembling, worry, anger, bitter, je jealous hearted, envious, contentious, argumentative, all of these things come when you're not in the will of God. When you're in the will of God, you're in his presence. His spirit is ruling and abiding in you. Glory to God. His will. His determination for you. God has already made a choice for your life. <laughs> and the only way you're going to change it is that you get in your will. Because you're not going to change God's plan. It's settled. He says, my word is forever settled in heaven. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but not my word. God's word is not going to change. His choice for your life is not going to change. So if we're going to have peace, the apostle Paul says, and the peace of God. But surpasseth all knowledge and understanding. It shall keep my mind, you see. He says, irregardless, sisters, what's going on in my life? I have peace because I know I'm in the will of God. I know that I'm an apostle to the Gentile. I, I'm, I'm, I'm doing his will. I'm doing his word. I, I've been in prison. I've been beaten. All of these things have happened to me. I've been bit by a snake. All of these things have happened to me. But I have peace. <laughs> because I'm in the will of God. So that's why people don't understand why you can have joy and you can rejoice when you're going through tribulation, trials, and circumstances, and you will. It is because you know you're in the will of God and that it will pass. It's only for a season. There's something that God is working in you, developing in you, develop, maturing you. Keeping us from being spoiled brats. <laughs> That's what God's will will do for you. It's God's determination, his choice. God's will is his purpose for you. I'm talking about kingdom people. Blood washed people, people whose name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I'm talking about you and to you. God's will is His decree. God has already decreed it, He has spoken it into existence. Everything that we see the heavens, the earth, the sea, the fish, the birds it was decreed by God. The sun, the, moon, the illumination, the sun, the moon, the stars, the planets. God decreed it to be so. It was his will for it to be there. It was his will for it to manifest. He spoke it into existence. And everything that God has already spoken into 
existence. He decreed it to be so, and it still is so. The moon is still the moon. The sun is still the sun. The planets are still the planets. The stars are still the stars. The birds are still the birds. Because he decreed it, because his word says, it's not going to change. A bird will not become a cow. A fish will not become a horse. I decree that a fish is a fish. You're going to swim in the water. He decreed it. You take a fish out of water, it dies. Because it's out of the will of God. Anytime we get out of the will of God, we die. We suffer. We bring abuse in our body, all kinds of sickness and disease because of stress and anger. Unforgiveness brings stress and pain in your body, unforgiveness. That's why the word of God says, forgive, forgive. He's decreed it to be so. That we must forgive. And if we don't forgive, he says, you won't be forgiven. And if you are not forgiven, if I'm not forgiven, then what happened? The curses that is upon the Egyptians will come upon us because we are not walking in the will of God. People, this is deep, and this is rich, and this is what has been staggering and killing the people of God, trying to force God to do something that he has not decreed to be so. Anytime mankind has attempted to move away from the plan of God, the principles that God has already decreed to be so, it brings disaster. They're saying all oh, these hurricanes and so forth is it, it's because of uh, warming. Uh, what, uh, I forget the, what they call it warming. Now. They're saying that the uh, glaciers and all of that is um, melting in, in Alaska and all of this. I say it's God. Because he said that it would be earthquakes. Not an earthquake or, or, or a global warning. Thank you. Global warning. They're saying what we're seeing now is global warning. Global war warming. I say it's God. If it's global warning, then God is in control of that. This is his world. And he has already decreed that these things shall be, and they shall be. I don't care what man call it. God said these are signs of the end time. Not a storm of this magnitude in over a hundred years, they say. God is speaking to us in this season, just as he spoke before, to warn us. And to say, get it right. Learn how to pray. My perfect will, because only my will that I've already decreed and established for you in heaven is going to manifest and give you that peace and joy that we are going to need to be able to stand. So again, what is God's will? It's his decree. God's will is his desire for you. God's will is God's pleasure. God takes pleasure in his people. He calls us his precious jewels. He calls us um, the, his bride. God takes pleasure. He says, my thoughts towards you are good and not evil to bring you to your expected end. God doesn't think any evil of us. He never thinks evil of us. Only to bring us to a place of pleasure. But only as we get in his will, only as we pray his will, and only as we accept his perfect will for our lives. Okay. Glory to God. That, that You can find that the definition in the Greek at 2307.
Now, let's look at, um, I have a few more minutes. Let's look at um, Psalms 116, Psalm 116. Glory to God. I, I, you know, I, I love the word of God and I'm just passionate about the things of God. And uh, he, he wants us to really get it. You don't want us to miss it. There's some things coming. God is saying, we better learn how to pray. We, we got to stop daydreaming. Oh, this is the way my life is going to be. Oh, no. Lord, you've already decreed. You've already spoken into existence. You've already planned my path to walk in. Get, help me to get, order my footsteps. Order my footsteps, oh Lord. Get, get me in the plain path so that I can walk that path so that I will be in your will. I, I will have that peace. I will have that joy. That, that when everybody else and everything else was falling apart, you, you still have it together. It's because you're in the will of God and you know there's safety in him and you have faith and confidence in him. Hebrew 10 and 35 says, cast not away that confidence for it does have great recompense of reward. That confidence is your trust in God. When you trust God, I'm telling you, there are rewards to trust in God that you, you can't even imagine. It, it gives you such a peace. You're not fearful of anything. And it's not because you're so bold and, you know, so brave and strong. Now it's, you know, you know, God's got you. God's got you. Okay. Psalm 116. And uh, we'll start with verse two. And we're going to read to verse nine. And this is, this is the psalmist, and, and he says, this is a, a prayer of thanksgiving for rescuing, being rescued from death. He said, Let, I, let's start with verse one. This is powerful. You need to read the entire psalm, verse 16. He says, I love the Lord, amplified, because he hears and continues to hear my voice and my supplications, my pleas, my cries, my pacific needs. Why? because we're praying the will of the Father. He, he hears you. And not only does he hear you, he will answer you. Amen. He, he, he'll, he'll provide. He'll do it. He'll open up the window of heaven over you and pull you out blessings. He will sustain you when everything else seems to be decaying. Because you have that one-on-one -on -one relationship with him. And you know how to pray. You're not going to pray selfishly. You're not going to pray prayers of greed. You're not going to be praying those Alice in Wonderland prayers. No. See, Alice in Wonderland, she was just run, roaming around. She got lost. We're not going to get lost in our prayers just wandering out, around praying aim, aimlessly, praying for things and praying for stuff, being carnal. We're not going to do that. Order my words, oh Lord. Order not only my steps, but order my words. Let the meditation of my heart and the words of my mouth be acceptable unto you. So you're going to pray for us in your heart. If things uh, is, is what's really foremost in your heart, that's what you're always going to be praying. That's what you're always going to be focused on. You're not going to be praying from the sincere open heart and says, Father, what is it that you have me to do? What is your plan? What is your purpose for me? Show me and get me in that path. Help me to understand and give me the strength to walk it out. You don't even have to ask for that strength because once you get in the will of God, he'll give you the strength to do it. 
because he wants you to succeed. Amen. And he says, verse two, because he has inclined his ear. Woo. God inclines his ear to us. He tunes in. He leans in. He fine tunes. When we're praying his will. Because he has inclined his ear to me. Therefore, I will call on him as long as I live. I know that the Father hears me because he knows my desire. He knows my heart. He knows I want to walk in his will. And I know that he will hear me when I call. Amen. He always heard Jesus when Jesus came into his presence. Except that one time. The Father always. The Father and Jesus Christ, boy, they were they they were connected. They they were one on one in this earth realm. Jesus says, "I only do the things I see the Father do. I only speak what I hear the Father say." He was in the Father's will, and he was always successful. Everything that Jesus did, it was done in perfection. It was done in excellence. It was supernatural. The will of God produces the supernatural ability in your life. It, it changes your position. You actually begin to be seated in that heavenly places with Christ Jesus. And you know it and you act like it. Jesus always said with the Father. He said, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. Not to do my will, Father, but to do you. God said, all right, you, you got it. Whatever you ask, son, I'm, I, I hear you. I incline my ear to hear you. And I'm going to do it. Because you want to do my will. There was only one time that the father, and he heard Jesus saying, he heard it. God hears everything. But Jesus is in Gethsemane, that, that place of press, the wine press. When his flesh was being pressed out of him. See, all of us have to go through a place where our flesh gets, gets dead and gets pushed out of us. That was only one time when the father ignored Jesus. He ignored him. He heard him. Father, take this cup. If it be that we'll remove this cup from it. The father didn't say a word because you know why? Because the father knew that Jesus knew what his will was before he says, prepare me a body, send me, I'll go. Jesus knew what he was going to come down here to do. To fulfill the plan and purpose of God. So when he prayed that prayer, the father just said, hey, it's left up to you. See, see God brings us to a place and a position where he says, it's left up to you. You can obey me if you want to, or you can not obey me. All of us come to that place of decision. But we have to make up our mind when we're going to say, Father, I submit. Uh, you know, it's, it's a rough road. Jesus says, I have a baptism to be baptized with. He knew it. But he submitted. So, so, so God in the garden of Gethsemane says, okay, Jesus, my son, my Yassid, my only begotten son, my first son, it's left up to you. Right now, you can decide. Right now, you can make a decision. Right now, the Father said to someone, right now, you can make a decision. Am I going to walk in your will? Because I know that your will is going to be some rough places. It's going to be some crooks in the road. It's going to be uh, some, some, some hard times, some difficult times. And God was saying, okay, Jesus, what you going to do? Jesus submitted. That's when he died, really. He, see, on, on the cross, the word God just said, Jesus died on the cross. He gave up the ghost. <laughs> he died in Gethsemane when he submitted to the will of the Father. 
When we submit to the will of the Father, we die to our own plan, our own will, our own way, our own thoughts. It's nevertheless, nevertheless not I, but it's Christ Jesus that lives in me. That's what the Apostle Paul says. You got to learn how to pray. God inclines his ear to those that's praying his will. And he says, Therefore, I will call on him as long as I live. The cords and sorrows of death come uh, past me, and the terrors of Sheol came upon me. I found distress and sorrow when I call on the name of the Lord. Oh, Lord, please save my life. Gracious is the Lord and consistently righteous. Yes, your God is compassionate. The Lord protects the simple, the light childlike that's us sometimes when we you know we groan and moan and complain and we're childlike he protects us i was brought low and humbled and discouraged and he saved me return to your rest oh my soul come on soul what's wrong with you return to your rest oh soul rejoice that's what Paul was saying. Rejoice consistently and, uh, 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 and consistently in the Lord. Rejoice. He said, return my soul. Hallelujah. Return to your rest, O my soul, for the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. For you have rescued my life from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from stumbling and falling. I will walk in submissive wonder before the Lord and the land of the living. The summer says, I submit to your will. Let your soul be at rest. Let your soul be at peace. And I'm going to close here tonight because I'm not nearly finished with you. But we come back in two weeks. <laughs> we'll we, we take here. we we'll start here. Because I want to get into some scripture where there's peace and success when praying God's will. You want peace? You want success? Then pray God's will. You want joy? See, joy is in us. That's the fruit of the spirit. But you can't allow joy. The word of God says that, you know, that that there's a way to pull up joy from the well of salvation. The fruit of the spirit, Jesus is in you. He's a well in you. Draw from him whatever it is that you need. You need peace, draw. You need love, draw. You need long suffering, draw. You need faith, draw. Whatever, draw. He's in you. And when we pray his will, we can receive all those, irregardless of the situation. Irregardless of the circumstance, because you know that you're in God's will. And if it concerns you, it concerns God. And if it concerns God, he promised to perfect it. He promised to make it right. He said he will make every crooked path straight. And every mountain, he's going to bring low in the name of Yeshua. Father, we thank you for your word tonight. Oh, God, how we give you glory. How we honor you. How you're so special and you're so sweet and you're so kind. You're so gracious to us and you're so long-suffering towards us, your children. And Father, tonight in the name of Yeshua, we thank you that you sent your word clearly telling us to pray your will and in your will is any and everything that we will ever need, want, 
a desire. So we praise you for it now. In Yeshua's name, amen and amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.